SEF Kids and welcome back to another episode of SEF Kids Online. Today we're going to continue our story about the man named Elijah that we learned about last week. But things are going to be a little bit different than what you're used to today. I'm actually going to take a bit of a break and instead of me teaching your story, our friends at Kids on the Move are going to lead us through our Bible story today. But don't worry, next week I'll be right back with you and we're going to continue on all those fun things that we've been doing over the last year. But for today, let's jump in and see where our story goes next. Hey everyone, my name is Abby and we're so excited that you're joining us today. Today, we're talking about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. This is an incredible story. Our God and a false God named Baal go head to head to see who the one true God is. Elijah prayed to God, but 450 other prophets prayed to Baal to see which God would send fire from heaven to consume their sacrifice. Elijah had to trust that God would come through and do something that would be impossible for us to do on our own. We can trust that the same God that did the impossible for Elijah can do the impossible for us too. That's why today we're saying, every day I can trust in Jesus. We're gonna start things off by singing a song together, so go ahead and stand up and sing this out with us as loud as you can. This life is a journey, a path made for me with every step I take. As I run this race, I'm becoming the person you call me to be, a child of God, a life redeemed, so I set my eyes on you, Jesus, I'm ready.
You guys sounded amazing. Thank you for singing along with us. Now we're gonna take some time to watch a Bible story together. And like I said earlier, today is about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. So let's check it out. King Ahab and his evil queen Jezebel had led Israel astray by worshiping other gods. The land was gripped by a terrible drought. While the prophets of God had been under siege by Jezebel's orders to kill them, the worship of Baal had flourished. Elijah, God's prophet, demanded to see Ahab. Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel. Elijah answered, You're the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have disobeyed the Lord's commands by worshiping Baal. Call together everyone from Israel and have them meet me on Mount Carmel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you try to have things both ways? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. The people did not say a word. Then Elijah continued, I am the Lord's only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it, and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meats on the wood without lighting the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bowl and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elijah said to Baal's prophets, there are more of you, so you go first. Pick out a bowl and get it ready, but don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They chose their bowl. Then they got it ready and prayed to Baal all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, answer us, Baal. But there was no answer. At noon, Elijah began making fun of them. Pray louder, he said. Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or, or using the toilet or or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to wake him up. The prophets kept shouting louder and louder and they cut themselves with swords and knives until they were bleeding. This was the way they worshiped and they kept it up all afternoon. But there was no answer of any kind. Elijah told everyone to gather around him while he prepared the Lord's altar. Then he used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name that the Lord had given their ancestor, Jacob. Elijah dug a ditch around the altar large enough to hold about 13 quarts. He placed the wood on the altar, and then they cut the bowl into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah prayed, Our Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Now prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me so that these people will know that you are the Lord God and you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent fire and it burned up the sacrifice, the wood, and the stones. It scorched the ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch. When the crowd saw what had happened, they all bowed down and shouted, the Lord is God, the Lord is God. The end. This is such a crazy story. Imagine watching this whole situation go down. The prophets of Baal were cutting themselves, tearing their clothes, and doing just about everything they could think of to try to get Baal to send fire. And while this is happening, Elijah was making fun of the prophets and their false god. Then, once they had stopped, Elijah prayed to God and the fire came out of nowhere. It burned everything up, including the water and the stones that made up the altar. I would encourage you to pause the video and take a couple of minutes to talk about the Bible story we just watched. Imagine watching this whole thing happen. 
How do you think the crowd reacted? And how do you think you would have reacted when the fire came down and burnt everything up? Then once you're done talking about that, unpause and continue the video. Our friend Justice is gonna be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now. So let's take a look. There are a lot of things that are impossible for us to do as humans. For example, for me to create something out of nothing would be impossible, right? I can hold my hand out and hope and wish that I was holding a potato, but it's impossible for me to create a potato out of thin air. But you know what's crazy? God can. He created the world and everything in it from nothing. And he did it in only six days because God can do the impossible. The Bible says it best in Matthew 19, 26. It says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We saw this concept in our Bible story today. The prophets of Baal were essentially trying to light their offering alone because they served a false God. They couldn't do it. It was impossible for them to call fire down from heaven. But then Elijah came in and prayed to the one true God and God did the impossible. He sent fire from heaven and consumed the offering and the altar that held it. It worked because even though we can't do the impossible, we can trust that God can. This is an amazing story, but the greatest example of God doing the impossible is none other than the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Remember, our verse says, with God, all things are possible. And Jesus was the first man to live in perfect relationship with God. Because of that, he performed so many impossible miracles. The Bible says that if they were all written down, the world couldn't contain all the books that would be written. He did things that no human could ever do on their own. They were impossible. But the most impossible miracle happened three days after Jesus was killed. Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus was raised back to life. Something so impossible that even some of his disciples didn't believe until they could see it for themselves. God brought Jesus back to life and he is alive forever in heaven because God can do the impossible. There's one more thing that's impossible for us to do on our own that I wanna talk about. It's impossible for us to become free from sin on our own. Sin is what separates us from God. This is what's so crazy about the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus did all of it so that we could be free from sin and have a true relationship with God, just like he does. He died to pay the price for our sin that separated us from God. He did what we couldn't. And because of what he did, we are free from sin and we can be in God's family forever. God did the impossible for us because he loves us so, so much. Is there something in your life that seems impossible? You may think that it's impossible to be healed after being sick for so long, but God can do the impossible. You may think that it's impossible to be happy again after losing a parent, but with God, anything is possible. There is no problem, no circumstance, no situation that God can't handle. If God sent his only son, Jesus, to die for your sins so that he could have a personal relationship with you, don't you think he cares about the impossible issues you're facing today? I can tell you without a doubt he does. How can you see the impossible become possible in your life? Do what our verse says. Don't try to live life on your own. Live your life with God, just like Jesus did. Every day we can trust him because he can do the impossible. Justice talked about how God did the impossible and how he can still do the impossible. He sent his own son Jesus to do the impossible and save us from our sin. We have a loving God who cares about our impossible issues and he wants to help us. Is there a problem in your life that seems impossible to get through? I would encourage you to take some time right now and talk about what your problem might be with your parents or your small group leader. Whatever it is, sickness, money problems, sadness, or anything else, remember, we have a God who cares about us enough to help us through our impossible issues. Every day, we can trust Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.
There's a spirit I cannot contain. There's a spirit I cannot contain. The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave. The same spirit I cannot contain. I don't walk alone. 